on a career ration of commercial TV spots as an old man who once conquered one of the most endearing and timeless genres along with Charlie Chaplin in silent comedies. A jester for the people, out of time and out of luck, he would watch carefully at the technical prowess he would strive for in Harry Houdini from backstage. His parents, a vaudeville act, were family friends of the great escapist. He would credit Houdini with nicknaming him Buster, a nod more than an anecdote about his nickname to his main artistic inspiration as a child. Buster would watch from the curtains Houdini and his own family, the Keatons, by the hour to see how the tricks and the gags were done. He would peek from holes in the pieces of scenery or watch from keyholes, but never discover how Harry Houdini did a single trick. A curiosity that would follow him till the end of his life and ignite his mastery of the silent movie gags. His early vestiges of his fascination with the mechanics of magic, solving the magic tricks in camera and in editing his movies. A real love for the magic of movies that can be found from the early Buster and his last years performing on things like TV. Those who can't get down, just get pictures, I'm going to bring something new. I'm going to bring silent television. This really might be the beginning of a very happy thought. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I cannot bring you silent television all alone. And ladies and gentlemen, my show is not only being graced by, but you also are having a great privilege in seeing for the first time, safely on television, and alive almost, one of the greatest, one of the greatest of the great comedians of the silent moving picture day, Mr. Buster Keaton. Buster, <laughs> you know, Buster, it's, uh, it's, uh, I'm very honored to have you on the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Silent movies, you know. <laughs> well, you can talk, Buster, and I'm quite sure the American public would like to hear you say something. Would you, would you say something? Go ahead, speak. Keaton believed that comedy traveled in circles. The creative life of a comedian was short, four years at most before comedy circled back around on itself. Buster marked out this comedy theory just two years before his death. Hello. The circle had repeated itself. Buster Keaton understood the flow of the art of comedy and witnessed the sound revolution that changed Hollywood by bringing in people who weren't there before. He saw a toxic class system take place in the industry that is the norm today. We can see it from the outside, from behind the scenes promotions and news reports. By 1958, Buster already saw the highest paid on set and the lowest paid grafters were the lowest of the pecking order. Policing guards were put on doors and highly paid actors erranded the grafters like servants. Buster Keaton saw this change himself, and he blamed the introduction of sound in movies, handing control to the money people behind movies. A resentment for it, maybe, as it ended his silent work? Either way, it's clearly a change that is felt to this day in an industry that throws away broken and lost artists like Buster when they no longer need them, like straw dogs. Bunch of straw dogs. Straw dogs? Yeah, in ancient Chinese rituals, dogs made of straw were used as offerings to the gods. Uh, during the ritual, they were treated with the utmost reverence. When they were no longer needed, they were tossed aside, trampled on, and they became nothing. Buster Keaton would turn into a tragic joke himself in the industry. 
with the comedy circle curling around to him and his silent movies just before he died, along with Charlie Chaplin getting his Oscar. It's ironic, and even sad, when the best silent comics all understood tragedy better than most was key to their comedic characters. They knew and understood who was the punchline of the joke, like the death of silent movies. The punchline was the stone-faced buster, or the tramp. The secret source of humour itself is not joy, but sorrow. His work during his prime was coloured by this sadness. In Chaplin's films, for example, a tramp, a professional victim, truly pathetic and full of comedy. There needs to be sorrow, and Buster Keaton knew if he were to smile on camera, the comedy would die. Buster kept uniformly in his films a desolated look. This great sadness seen in his films saw a sadder looking Keaton near the end of his life, where the comedy had dried up and it was no longer funny to laugh at an old man. Like many pioneers of their art, they took the road untraveled for the future journeymen and women near the end of his storied life. In interviews, Buster seemed to be intoxicated with nostalgia for the silent years of those years where he conquered the magic of the silent movies. The stone face, now wrinkled and disenfranchised, lost its humour. In the lost and found of a harsh industry, he helped foster the last chapters of his life, finding out how empty Hollywood's epicentre is for artists like Buster. In the start and the end of his life, watching magic from behind the curtain, and then a tired, silent movie star, living off commercials. It makes the stone face seem like a symbolic image of the actor's whole life, distilled in the glass-eyed look into the camera from his movies. Not as a wall break to crack a joke to the audience, but a plea for sympathy for an artist's real struggle to make you smile at his sorrowful life story. You'll see a face as haunting as the face of Abraham Lincoln. And what memories will come to many of you when you see the memories of little movie theaters and silent picture days over a bag of peanuts and popcorn. We yelled with laughter at the antics of this sad faced little man. Don't you cry, let me cry. <laughs>